good morning you guys so uh, we are on talk we are on page 67 I'm gonna try to go up to page 84 okay so we're on talk and it says and talk is from pages 67 to um, 68 it says when you want your words to help not hurt Psalms 1914 may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you O Lord my rock and my Redeemer that's Psalms 1914 Proverbs 25 11 timely advice is lovely like golden apples in a silver basket Ephesians 4 29 don't use foul or abusive language let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them that's Ephesians 4 29 okay now we're on page 68 when you wonder why you say certain things Matthew 12 34 through 37 whatever is in your heart determines what you say a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart and I tell you this you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak the words you say will either acquit you or condemn you Matthew 12 34 to 37 guys it is a little busy out I went grocery shopping in the first video uh, when I did the ladies video now I'm out at another stop before I get back on the road so sorry guys about the noise but I have to press in with these videos guys so you know please excuse me with that so that's Matthew 12 34 through 37 so this next one when your tongue gets you in trouble Psalms 34 12 through 13 does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies that's Psalms 34 12 through 13 James 1 19 you must all be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to get angry okay this is when people accuse you for your faith Psalms 57 3 he will send help from heaven to rescue me disgracing those who hound me my God will send forth his unfailing love and faithfulness Acts 5 41 the apostles left the high council rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus that's Acts 5 41 1 Peter 4:14. 4, Be happy when you are insulted for being a Christian, for then the glorious spirit of God rests upon you. Okay, now we're on page 69, going into 70, we're going to talk about temptation. When you're tempted to look where you shouldn't. Romans 6, 12 through 14. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin instead give yourselves completely to God for you were dead but now you have new life so use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God sin is no, no, no longer your master for you no longer live under the requirements of the law instead you live under the freedom of God's grace okay that's Romans 6 12 through 14 first John 4 4 you belong to God my dear children you have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world okay let's talk about when you're trusting in your own strength to stand firm first Corinthians 10 12 to 13 if you think you are standing strong be careful not to fall the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience and God is faithful he will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand when you are tempted he will show you a way out so that you can endure Okay, James 4, 6 through 7 says he gives us even more grace to stand against such evil desires. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud but favors the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. When you call on the Lord for help, do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord God of heaven's armies will be your helper just as you have claimed. Amos 5, 14. Okay, let's talk about thoughts. When you need help controlling your thoughts this is pages 70 to 71 those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the spirit so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace that's from Romans 8 5 through 6 okay when you wonder how to renew your thought life now dear brothers and sisters one final thing fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me everything you heard from me and saw me doing then the God of peace will be with you that's Philippians 4 8 to 9 when anxiety plates your thoughts you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you all whose thoughts are fixed on you that's from Isaiah 26 3 okay we're on page 71 
Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. That's from Philippians 4, 6. Okay, this one says, when you wonder how God thinks. 1 Samuel 16, 7. The Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I've rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Okay, let's talk about timing of God. Pages 71 is um, just 71. Because 72 is talking about truth. Okay, so timing of God. When you don't understand God's timing. Psalms 18 verse 30. God's way is perfect. 2 Peter 3 8 says, You must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. Okay, when every day is seen as an opportunity from the Lord. Psalms 90 verse 12. Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. 2 Peter 3, 9. When you wonder why Jesus hasn't come back yet. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed but wants everyone to repent. That's 2 Peter 3, 9. Okay, let's talk about truth. It's page 72. When you want to know the truth. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. That's 2 Peter 3.16 Okay, this next one. When you wonder why the truth matters, this truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised them before the world began. And that's in Titus 1.2 This one says, When you've been living a lie, Proverbs 12, 19 says, truthful words stand the test of time, but lies are soon exposed. Colossians 3, 9 through 10, don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. That's Colossians 3, 9 through 10. 1 Timothy 4, 16, keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. That's 1 Timothy 4.16. Okay, this is what says, when you wonder if Jesus is the only true way to heaven. John 14.6, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Excuse me, guys, let me get something to drink real quick. Okay, we're going to go to the next page now. We're talking about victory, which is just all of page 73. It says, when you feel defeated. You have rescued me from my troubles and helped me to triumph over my enemies. That's Psalms 54, verse 7. Romans 8, 35 to 37. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victories are through Christ who loved us. That's from Romans 8, 35 to 37. Okay, the next one says, when you wonder if God will help you overcome your problems, don't be afraid for I'm with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. That is from Isaiah 41, 10. John 16, 33 says, here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Okay, this one says, when you need to be reminded of Jesus' ultimate triumph. All who are victorious will be clothed in white. I will never erase their names from the book of life, but I will announce before my father and his angels that they are mine. Okay, that's Revelation 3, 5. So now we're going to talk about violence. This is page 74. When the violence of the world is overwhelming, Isaiah 60 verse 18 and also 22 says violence will disappear from your land. The desolation and destruction of war will end. Salvation will surround you like city walls and praise will be on the lips of all who enter there at the right time. I, the Lord, will make it happen. Okay, let's talk about the will of God, which is pages 74 to 75. When you are trying to find God's will, Micah 6, 8, the Lord has told you what is good and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Romans 12, 1 to 2, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Okay, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. That's from Romans 12, 1 to 2. 
Okay. When you wish you could know God's plan for your future. God's plans for your future. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Okay, page 75. You're still in the will of God. When you obey what God commands. James 1, 25. If you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. James 1, 25. 1 John 5, 14. We are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. That's 1 John 5, 14. Okay, now we're going to talk about witnessing. This is pages 75 to 76. When you need a reason to speak out. I tell you the truth, everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, the Son of Man will also acknowledge in the presence of God's angels. But anyone who denies me here on earth will be denied before God's angels. That's Luke 12, 8 through 9. John 12, 26. Anyone who wants to be my disciple, I truly apologize about the noise, y'all, but I got to get it in how I can, you guys. Um, John 12, 26. Anyone who wants to be my disciple must follow me because my servants must be where I am. And the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Okay, when you feel awkward about when you feel awkward talking about Jesus, Acts 1 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And the video that we recorded yesterday, guys, we recorded it was it was like close to 40 minutes, I believe. This one will be much shorter because we're almost done, but that one was a little bit quieter. Because I was in my room when I recorded that. It's just I'm out today, you know. So, um, okay, back to when you feel awkward about talking about Jesus. Romans 10, 15. How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Okay, now we're on page 76. When you're afraid of how others will respond. This is um, talking about witnessing. I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes. Romans 1, 16. Excuse me. Okay, let's talk about wives. Page 76 to 77. When you don't understand her. First Peter 3, 7. You husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should so your prayers will not be hindered. That's First Peter 3, 7. When you wonder if you'd be better off alone. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can each can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Okay, when you disagree with her. Colossians 3, 12 through 13. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Page 77, when you want your love to last. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Ephesians 5.28 says, Husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. That's Ephesians 5.28. Okay, let's talk about um, work. Work. Page um, 77 to 78. Okay, when you think your efforts go unnoticed at work. Colossians 3.23 to 24 says, Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. Okay, when you feel burnt out in your job, Psalms 23, 1 through 3 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Okay, page 78, still talking about work. When you need a better perspective on your work. Matthew 5, 16. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Philippians 1, 6. When you are not sure if God is working in you, and then it gives you Philippians 1, 6. It says, I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns okay we got to talk about worship
worship it's just page 78 to 79 it says when you have much to be thankful for psalms 92 verse 1 it is good to give thanks to the lord to sing praises to the most high psalms 103 1 through 5 says let all that i am praise the lord with my whole heart i will praise his holy name let all that i am praise the lord may i never forget the good things he does for me he forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. Psalms 103, 1 through 5. When you need a reason to worship. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's from Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Revelations 15, 3 to 4. Great and marvelous are your works, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous deeds have been revealed. Okay, that's Revelations 15, 3 to 4. And uh, worth is the last one for W. Um, and then it just goes into favorite verses and I am going to read that to you guys. And then like the back of the book just has a space, like if you want to take notes and I encourage you, um, that these videos for the men have been for, um, you know, take some notes or, you know, on your electronic device or write out or just reflect over, you know, some things that God is saying to you or like some of the scriptures or things that kind of stood out to you while we were reading this book. So, um, or just whatever God is, you know, putting on your heart and things. So worth. When you feel too insignificant for God to care about you. Luke 12, 6 to 7. What is the price of five sparrows? Two copper coins? Yet God does not forget a single one of them. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows or like birds. That's Luke 12, 6 to 7. Um, this next one is from Ephesians 2, 10. It says, we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. And that's Ephesians 2.10. So guys, um, that's page 79. We're going to get into favorite verses. Um, this is 81 to um, like 84 because page 80 is blank. And I'm just going to read this to you guys. This one says, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. That's from number 6, 24 to 26. This one says, God is your strength. Some nations boast of their chariots and horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. Thank you, Lord. That's from Psalms 20, verse 7. God is merciful. Do not remember the rebellious sins of my youth. Remember me in the light of your unfailing love, for you are merciful, O Lord. That's Psalms 25, verse 7. You can start anew. Psalms 51.10 Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Okay, God cares for you. Psalms 55 verse 22. This is page 82. Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. God is in control. Proverbs 19.21 You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Work well. Um, this one is from Ecclesiastes 9.10 Whatever you do, do well. God is able. Jeremiah 32, 27. I am the Lord, the God of all the peoples of the world. Is anything too hard for me? The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Matthew 6, 9 through um, 13. Setting priorities. Matthew 6, 33. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and love righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Okay, we're on page 83 now. Persistence is rewarded. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Okay, God offers rest. Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Becoming a child of God. John 1 12. To all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Okay, Romans 8 18 is talking about suffering is temporary. That was becoming a child of God. Okay, what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. Romans 8 18. Our weakness displays his strength. 2 Corinthians 12 9. Each time the Lord said, My grace is all you need, my power works best. 
in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness, weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Last page, you guys. This is um, living for Christ. Galatians 2, 20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2, 20. Pray continually. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. That's from Ephesians 6, 18. And the last scripture, you guys, is unconditional thanks. It says, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. And that's from 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. So God bless you guys. Uh, that other video that I recorded uh, yesterday is still uploading. It was like on 38%. So it's still uploading. It's been uploading for a couple um, hours now because it's pretty early. So it's just taking a while. But I'll probably try to change the Wi-Fi thing and see if that'll pick up a little bit um, faster. So you guys will probably get this one first, but that one was recorded first. So um, if you want to, well, I probably should have said that in the beginning. But if you already listened to it, then you already listened to this. So you can go back and get that one. Or you may just watch that one first and then come back to this one. But anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. I really hope that you all have been encouraged. I pray uh, peace and blessings to you guys and your families. And, you know, you guys be blessed.